Well, look what the cat dragged in. Look who is back after their roommate gnawed <laughs> on the internet cable. Cool. I'll tell you what. Then this doesn't. This is. Uh, uh, we were just talking about first world problems off the air. It's a very first world problem. For months, if not years now, my internet will just shit out for like five minutes at a time, twice a day. Usually it happens between like three or five, three and five o'clock in the afternoon. And then again, late night, like sometimes between 10 and midnight for no apparent reason. We had someone come out a couple years ago, put some sort of filter on the line going into the modem, claim that would fix it. Never did. But we just kind of learned to live with it. The other night, as we were getting ready to record, the internet just stopped working altogether. Not for five or 10 minutes, for almost five hours. And I was like, this is fucking, this is patently outrageous. Like, there was no outages in the area. It just was very specific to our home. So it ended up it ended up kicking on later on in the evening, well well into the night. Um, so I set up an appointment with Comcast. Lady comes out tonight. Very nice. Very nice. She went out of her way to say that the filter that the other guy put on might have been the reason why it's been happening. So I'm like, I don't know. It was like happening before. So she said everything's good. I don't know. Internet internet it seems to be fine right now, but it's it's a very first world problem to lose internet for like 20 minutes a day. That's that's for sure. Do you think that either your mother or father has parental controls on your house and is just trying to take you off the internet yeah, for a little while? It might, it might be that. It's it's just very frustrating. I've I've sort of learned to like time it. Like certain times, like all right, I'll go in the shower. All right, I'll eat now because I know we're gonna lose the internet for three minutes or something like that. And, but sometimes when you forget in your middle of an intense show and the internet just shits out, you're like motherfucker. It's and we uh, we live in a world such as as. The, like the world we live in is so internet driven and the home I live in, we don't have cable. I mean, it's sort of one and two with the internet anyways, but when you lose internet, it's almost as bad as losing power. Like you, you could bury yourself in your phone, but like you got nothing, you get absolutely nothing. Yeah. I have one television. I'm like an older television in my house that does sometimes lose internet while every other thing in my house is absolutely fine. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like I just can't grasp onto it. Other first world problems that we have here is uh, today, my wireless keyboard stopped working <laughs> and it was just a real hassle having to have my laptop open while looking at another screen and trying to figure out like, hey, which way am I dragging this onto this screen and that onto that screen? And yeah, yeah. I, I don't like the feel of my ThinkPad laptop. Sure, sure. So basically between our first world problems and our sicknesses over this last week, it's been a tough week for Mac and Goo. What, what idiot did you have filling the other day? I had Keef on, oh, and right. I pointed out to him, it's like a Twilight Zone episode right now. Yeah, right, right. He also did an amazing impression of you. I'll post that on social media. <laughs> Good enough. And uh, speaking of Keith, he is a New England broadcaster. What a fucking transition you just yeah, had there. Wow. In, in New England right now. Big news? Big news in New England, hot off the presses, is that after 70 years, which fucking blew my mind, but Bob's, I'm not talking Bob's discount furniture, but the Bob's stores that sells clothing, shoes, ETC, oh. will be closing okay. their remaining 21 stores across our six great states. Mac, what is your hashtag Bob's memory? Uh, I used to go to Bob's every year uh, leading up to school. Back to school? Yes. Back, back to, to school, school shopping? shopping. Yeah. Woo! Get everything at Bob's. Back to school, Bob Bob's shopping, Mac and Goo. Yeah. Wow. Uh, before you clarified, I thought we were talking about Bob's Discount Furniture. So I'm a, I Bob's Discount Furniture means nothing to me. Bob's the store with everything means everything to me. Unless Bob's Discount Furniture wants to sponsor us, they can go eat shit. I remember specifically, this is it was either freshman or sophomore year of high school. Probably sophomore, because I would have had more confidence in this. I remember buying um for like my a my a1 shoes you know you always have a yeah. couple pair of shoes but my new a1 shoes at the end of the school yeah. year was a pair of white echoes with red laces and the silver echo logo on the side and that coincided with my new one strap backpack a black Ooh. and red echo backpack and i wow. thought i was the coolest kid on the block so you said that you were were you confident in this look or oh yeah were you concerned? no doubt okay confident i don't that's why i think it must have been sophomore year because i don't think i would have done it for freshman year I didn't know what to expect for freshman year. Played a yeah. little more conservatively. Sophomore year, you're fucking de bella de ball. Well, back to school shopping everywhere was always a little bit of like, is this 
2000 and late. Right. Am I getting in on this? Am I on late? a trend or am I past a trend? Or am I doing something that is going to get me ridiculed? <laughs> yeah. Like one year. And I thought this was a great idea. I bought two pairs of K Swiss shoes, oh, the exact man. same pair. Yeah. One was white. One was black. Sure. Sure. And when I wore the black pair, people thought that I went emo. <laughs> I think my my biggest one, this wasn't a hiccup. I think I was on it. Um, seventh grade, I bought a visor, a Nike visor, which I enjoyed. Which and, you would wear backwards and upside down. Yep, no doubt, especially on field trips. And then also I had an inf- uh, a, uh, a Nike puffy vest that was reversible. <laughs> it was red on one side, like a dark charcoal gray on the other. All over the trends. Rough. <laughs> rough that one's rough there might be a photo of us in either seventh or eighth grade and it might be both of us doing this where we had backwards upside down visors going to canopy lake park there Final was also I, there was also se- I, this was seventh grade i think i remember showing up to school on the first day with a short sleeve button up and the short sleeve button up had flames coming from the bottom of the shirt <laughs> We called him Guy Fee Mackey. And I remember our pal Stefanos Galuzis had the same fucking shirt. So number one, I was mad that he had the same shirt, stole my swag. Number two, looking back, I'm glad I was not the only idiot there. <laughs> one, two, three, yeah! And I'm Mac. And we are the Mac and Goo program. We bring you $300 million. Yes. Uh, recently, we learned, news dump, that Woo! Captain America, uh, the bold and the beautiful, has a budget of over, around, roughly. Reportedly. So right now, yes. Yeah. $350 million, which, to put that in perspective, in my mind, I expect blockbusters to be like, 150 to 200 most movies are 50 to 100 a lot of small like a 24 movies might be 25 million 350 yeah, million those. is above and beyond most movies ever made well when compiling this list it's pretty much if it is a tentpole movie it is a movie that they are guaranteeing to themselves will be a 1 billion dollar movie they're fine with doing a 300 dollar not 300, 300 million dollar budget. And that's just production budget. Because when we go over these numbers in a second, this is just their production budget. So you can add anywhere from 150, 200, or even double the budget of this for their advertising too. Yeah, and and just a little peek behind the curtain here. Some of these are older movies that have been adjusted for inflation. So not technically 300 million at the time, but the equivalent of what 300 million was then and grow, going through this list. So uh, it cuts off. What's today's 30- topic, by the way, what's today's oh, topic? Right, right, right. Uh, this is movies that got made for lots of money. $300 million movies. Yeah. Uh, there's been 36 of them ever. And at 350 million reportedly, the new Captain America movie has only been surpassed by 17 other movies in the history of movie making. And by the end of it, Goo, that number might be close to 400 million. That's just what it is yeah, right now. Know. So yeah. uh, this will be very a very interesting list to go through. And to your point, yes, they're okay spending this if they think they're going to double their money. Um, but a lot of these did not. Do that. Once again, like you got to make a billion dollars. Yeah, you. Yes, if if you include advert, especially these days, including an advertising budget, you have to make a billion dollars just to what make your money back or double your investment like i I don't know how the math works out you almost have to just double whatever the budget is that's pretty much it yeah yeah yeah. and then also uh i know uh they got tax returns back on some of these so you're off by 50 i'm not counting tax returns i'm not clicking through a thousand fucking wikipedia pages here guys (laughs) so without further ragu let's take a look at the 36 300 million dollar movies top 12 Three top 12s. That's what we call it. We just invented that. Mac, let's start off with The Dark Knight Rises that came out in 2012 at the time. Cost anywhere between 
230, 300 and, uh, 250 million dollars with inflation that's around 305, but it did cross worldwide 1 billion dollars. The reason for this cost is that over an hour of the movie was shot in IMAX. The cast by the time of a third movie cost a lot more than the first movie. The effects are there and the shooting locations, lots of shooting locations for this movie. Yeah, this one is like, okay, I understand it. This was going to be a ballooned budget no matter what they did. Coming off The Dark Knight, which is a lot of people's favorite movie ever, uh, a lot of people's favorite comic book movie ever, especially um, the end of that trilogy, you knew it was going to be, going to have to try to surpass that. Keyword to try. Um, This makes sense to me. I have no issue with this movie. uh, Closing out a trilogy, a Nolan trilogy, uh, costing this much um but like if you compare that to brave new world which we don't have to do for every single one no no, we're doing that for every single one um this is the start of a new trilogy it's not the end of of an old trilogy so no but no it's a completely different scenario not to do this with brave new world with all of these but this just seems like it's just a big mistake that they're trying to fix (laughs) i bet at some point while watching that movie we're gonna be like okay they basically combined two movies or when they started this, the movie was one vision. Here's another. And that's why the budget yeah, of this so movie not is to, two movies. Not to once again, bring this up with every single movie, but like compare it to solo that had tons of reshoots, tons of rewrites, justice league, tons of uh, reshoots and rewrites. Uh, I don't believe they swapped directors on this movie. I think it's just that they've tried to make two different movies that yep. they're having it, they, a difficult time with. It's It sounds like a square peg round hole, and they've had to do a lot of shaving of the peg. Focus on the list now. Okay. Coming in at number 35, Goo, a movie that I unabashedly like. Uh, I wouldn't say That's love, good. but I like it uh, more than most. 2006's Superman Returns, starring Brandon Ralph. Uh, the budget for this was $204 million. Uh, with inflation, that's around three hundred eight million in today's money. This made two hundred million at the domestic box office, a massive disappointment since that's that was what it cost to make. Only three hundred ninety one million worldwide. Didn't even double up worldwide. Uh, considering advertising and whatnot, I'd be surprised if this movie made much money. Uh, of course, directed by Brian Singer, who probably got this based off the X Men movies. Mm-hmm. Um, it just uh, this movie didn't do well. I actually think this movie is pretty decent. I don't know really. So it is, um, I believe, a, con- a continuation of the Reeves movies, right? It's supposed to be the same I believe character. so, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess maybe that's where they lost people. Um, but I, Kate Bosworth played Lois Lane. Um, I enjoyed that movie. Again, at 17 years old, I'm not the smartest moviegoer. I enjoyed that movie. I've seen At that 35, movie. 35, you aren't the smartest movie. <laughs> I've seen that movie a dozen times. I do not dislike that movie. Also, a bunch of big set action pieces in this as well, where you can tell that's where the money went. That airplane scene is great. And speaking of big action scenes, they actually cut a $10 million scene that they filmed, did the whole thing for, and they said, it doesn't fit into the movie. And that is Superman returning to Krypton. Yeah, it's that's interesting because obviously we know the theatrical edit of that movie. It literally would make zero sense in, at any point of that movie for Krypton to come into play. So that's that's pretty interesting. But it would have looked cool. I guess so. <laughs> at number 34, a movie that at the time only cost $31 million, but that was in 1963. <laughs> And that is Cleopatra, the movie that almost bankrupt Hollywood with inflation cost three hundred and ten million dollars. It eventually did make its money back and become profitable after a theatrical run and selling itself to television uh, with fifty eight million dollars. And this is according to Reader's Digest. Uh, It began in nineteen fifty eight. The filming began in nineteen fifty eight with a two million dollar budget. And eventually, after five years, ballooned to 20 times the amount of that price. Elizabeth Taylor played the titular Cleopatra. And of course, during this movie, there was a scandalous romance between her and her star, Richard Burton. The original director, Ruben Mamolian, only had eight minutes of footage after two months of filming in England. 
had a lot to do with Taylor having health issues at that time. They relocated the cast and director. Sorry, a new cast and new director. So they got rid of everybody. They moved them from England to Rome, which cost a lot more money. They had 5,000 wigs and 2,600 costumes. And this movie was eventually condemned by the Pope. Thousand plastic meatballs. Got to be good on my end or no fucking deal. Um, I have not seen this movie, but I'll be honest, I've almost watched it a couple times just yeah. because it is so notable. And again, in 1963, the 31 million, to put that a little bit in perspective, people were like building homes, large homes in 1963 for like $30,000. So $31 million is yeah. a shit ton of money. It is an awful lot of money that, uh, of course, now makes sense why it almost bankrupted fucking Hollywood. Um I might watch. I might watch this soon. To be honest with you, I, it's just because of this. Yeah, it's like an interesting story behind the whole thing. So it's it's. I don't think it's a bad movie from what I've heard. It no. just costs a shit ton of money to make. I remember watching most of it with my grandfather and him telling me like this movie cost a lot of money, and now that really speaks to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like they built their own pyramids. They built like giant cities to have it fit into this, and like. That's just crazy that around every turn, they're like, should we cancel this? No, let's throw more money at it. And obviously, you know, uh, I don't know what the geopolitical landscape of Egypt was in 1963. I bet that it would have made it. more sense just to go to fucking Egypt. I, right? know, I bet they probably couldn't have. And that's probably why they ended up where they did. But that that would have been interesting to, to see how that would have. Although I would out. say that when I was in Rome this past year, I said to myself, this looks a lot like Egypt. <laughs> Coming in at night, oh, Surrey. Coming in at 32. At one, 94. One of the 90s most anticipated movies, at least for Goo and I, who were 10 years old in 1999, was Wild Wild West, which at the time was made for $170 million, with inflation that is $311 million in today's money. What a colossal flop this was. $114 million domestically, $222 million worldwide. Jeez. Uh, considering all the money they put into advertising for this movie, no doubt in my mind, this movie lost like $200 million. Well, they had to have that giant spider. <laughs> they had to have the giant spider that was in the movie that cost a ton of money. And because of audience feedback, they had to do a ton of reshoots. I, you know, Will Smith, when he gets hired for this movie in what, 97, is maybe the biggest action star on the planet. And he uh, famously chose this movie, this role, over The Matrix. Over The Matrix, which was yes. notable and made news even then, um, especially in 99 when The Matrix comes out and blows people's minds. So what a colossal fail this was. I don't, I haven't seen the rest of the list, but I would be surprised if this isn't the biggest failure on the list. Oh, no, there's way more. Oh, oh. At oh, 32, boy. we have The Fate and the, I'm sorry, Fate of the Furious from 2017, $250 million budget at the time with inflation 311. It made 226 domestic and it did pass 1 billion at the box office, 1.236 worldwide. You got stunts, you've got cast, you've got cars, lots of cars that they are crashing. These movies just do well internationally. And I think it's because. They don't need to dub over lots of stuff. It's just straight action. So it's I think it's, it's easier to sell internationally. I can't stand the Furious movies. I, I haven't had a desire to watch one since the third one. So uh, I don't I don't know why people keep going back, quite honestly. Well, they're starting to slow down. Yeah, it only took 11 movies. Yeah. Coming at 31, Spectre. Of course, the James Bond movie from 2015. Made for $245 million. That is the equivalent of 315 in today's money. It only made 200 domestically. Did make 881 million worldwide, uh, starring Daniel Craig. Was this the one with ha Javier Bardem as the bad guy? I know Dave Bautista was in this one, right? Dave Bautista, I believe, was in this one as well. Uh, you have a great note here. They crashed seven DV10 Aston Martins. That that alone cost fifteen million dollars, which is crazy. I can only like, imagine like the car people on set, like just I, uh, uh. from from what I saw, from what I read, there were only ten of these cars in existence. Oh, and they crashed seven of the ten, so they had seven of them. Yes. Oh my god, that's what that's what I saw. I could be that, wrong. No, that's, that's either way. Even if there was twenty in existence, the fact that they had seven and crashed seven is insane. Like you would think that. They would have a beat up car that they continually use for stunts that you would 
you would think, again, with today's digital technology, you could paint up on CGI to make it look not damaged to use mm -hmm. for those live action shots. It's just that seems like an incredible waste of automobiles. I think also by this point, 2015, Daniel Craig was getting a real nice paycheck on these movies. Yeah, that makes sense, too. At 29, X-Men The Last Stand from 2006, $210 million to make. I think at the time it was the highest priced movie of all time. Right now, if you look at inflation, 317. At the box office, 234 domestic, 460 worldwide. That's not great. The visual effects were done by 11 different companies. That was a huge issue with the cost. And by the third movie, the cast was quite expensive. Uh, the first X-Men movie does not hold up tremendously well. X2 does, however. And it's funny to think about uh, this in 2006 versus Dark Knight Rises six years later, how it's not the same it's they're not roughly equivalent but it's a similar scenario where it's a much anticipated third movie coming off a very successful first two movies yeah. and this went one way is not great as dark knight rises is to a lot of people i would say that was pretty successful oh um, yeah it made a billion dollars it's stunning to see how 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 bad this one was compared to that mm -hmm. at number 29 goo tied with x men the last stand uh beauty of the beast and not the og the 2017 version starring emma watson that was made for 255 million 317 in today's money this did however gross a shit ton of money 504 domestically over 1.2 billion worldwide uh this was i think their first venture into the live action stuff or jungle no? book jungle oh book. jungle book that's right um this was much anticipated. Um, a lot of people really liked this movie. I thought it was pretty lazy. I, I didn't. And this you could kind of say about all their live action remakes, I suppose, outside of Aladdin. I, I think Aladdin still holds up best. Um, it is kind of stunning. I guess it is a whole new generation to, to watch Beauty and the Beast. But uh, it's stunning how many people really like this movie has like good Rotten Tomato scores, too. Then, of course, you know, you're doing the entire animation with this that has to do with the live action. Then, you know, Stevens, uh, yeah, most of the, the world beast. is also a mix of animation and live uh, just regular. And then the cast cost a lot of money yep. at 28. The Chronicles of Narnia uh, Prince Caspian from 2008 made for two hundred and twenty five million dollars, which is kind of incredible to believe. On inflation is 318. It made 142 domestic and 420 worldwide. Yeah, another movie that undoubtedly lost a lot of money. I I never really got it with the Chronicles of Narnia. Never really. I remember as a kid, the books being popular or at least popular with the olds. I was never drawn into them. You know, we're talking Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe here. Um, I never saw these movies. Just never got the appeal. And it seemed like they eat, they each got worse with each sequel they mm -hmm. made. At number 27, another entry into the uh, Furious world, Furious 7 from 2015, made for 250 then. That is equal to $321 million now. Again, this movie made a shit ton of money. 353 domestically, over $1.5 billion worldwide. That's fucking insane. Cars, 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 cars. Cast effects. At 25, King Kong from 2005, 207 made for at the time and inf with inflation 323 it made 218 domestic 557 worldwide and with any peter jackson movie he's always trying to innovate and do something new so with innovation with new things you're going to have stuff that costs more money the kong animation looks amazing in this i think the animation on some of the other beasts aren't as good but they put their money towards kong which makes sense and then the movie is long and when a movie is long it also costs more money to make yeah, this is Jack Black, Naomi Watts, right? That's the movie we're talking yeah. about here. Um, the other thing that you're getting into with Peter Jackson is also long shooting schedules. He takes a while yeah. to make movies. And of course, that means obviously more money in the long run. Um, another movie, I really don't mind, Gil. Not a bad movie. Not a bad mm -hmm. movie. Didn't do all that well, but not a bad movie. Coming in at number 25, tied, I guess, with King Kong. Oh, because of inflation. There you go. Uh, Spider-Man 2, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 from 2004. It made, uh, oh, it cost $200 million 
Uh, in 2004, that is equivalent to 323. In 2024, it did go on to make 374 domestically and 790 million worldwide. I will say this, though, is that it's crazy how much better Spider-Man 2 looks compared to Spider-Man 1. Just the effects, uh, how Doc Ock operates his body in there compared to Goblin, it's just a better looking movie. Yeah, it's. I would say of all the early comic book movies, it's probably the best made movie of those the most well-made movie of all of Do those you think that it ones. is the biggest improvement from sequel to original not storytelling wise but just the way that they were able to fix the cgi yeah i may i i still think x2 is a greater improvement just because i think the first spider-man holds up better than the first x-men does i know but he has rubber legs in the first one <laughs> whereas in the second one doc ock and granted it is a mix of uh, effects puppetry everything else but his arms look so fucking good yeah no you're right there and there's a couple great set pieces in the movie um i i still would lean the x-men w when it comes to that though Coming out last year, 2023, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny cost $326 million to make. It made $174 domestic and $384 worldwide. Harrison Ford makes a big old paycheck. He's also old, so they need a lot of CGI to fix some of the issues of him moving around. They also de-aged him for 20 minutes of the movie. It's long. It is a very, very long movie. It's also a period piece, so things are going to cost money. A 20-minute part of a already expensive movie to have to go in and fix his face in every second of that scene is arduous and obviously to me, costs it is a the best of part of the movie and worth every single penny. <laughs> Fair enough. And, and just to help you there, $326 million in 2023 is $326 million in 2024. So still, still the same. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> Uh, coming in at 23, Goo mentioned this a couple minutes ago, Solo, a Star Wars story. Uh, that came out in 2018, was made for 271 then. That translates to $329 million in today's money. This was a colossal flop, especially uh, in terms of Star Wars money. 214 domestically, $393 million worldwide. For a Star yeah, Wars, because this movie came out in insane. the middle of the sequel trilogy, I believe, yep. right after Jedi. So that's those two movies making a billion and a half dollars each, and then yeah. you bring this one out that can't even crack a half billion. And it's weird. And I, you and I both like this movie. We don't love it. We we admit it's pretty decent. Could have been. It's a better. Han Solo Wikipedia page. It, it could have been better, no doubt. Yeah. Um, and this dealt with originally having uh, Lord and Miller as its directors. They had creative differences with the, the head of Star Wars, which now I think we've been saying for six years now, we would love to see that Lord and Miller movie. Ron Howard famously comes on to direct the it. Fixer. Makes it very safe, makes a very safe mm -hmm. movie. Um, so a lot of money went into that overall change. But again, $271 million then, or 329 now, with a Star Wars movie, you're expecting to make triple that no matter what. And the fact mm -hmm. that it barely didn't even make $400 million worldwide is insane. At number 22, Batman v Superman colon Dawn of Justice from 2016 cost $263 million. Today's money, that is $334 million. It made domestically $330 million, $874 worldwide. Very expensive cast, especially when you're dealing with the likes of a Ben Affleck. Uh, lots of effects, tons and tons of effects. It's pretty long as well. And uh, most of it was also shot in 3D. I think they spent a lot of the budget on the Wonder Woman guitar riff too. That was that was a that's big money part of well spent story. though. Because <laughs> if you're if you think back to one thing from the DC universe, it's the <laughs> man, 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 man. Um, tough to say anything new about BVS that hasn't already been said. I think now looking back with some hindsight on the quality of what we got in that DCEU. This is probably right in the middle. It's not even in the bottom tier of those movies. I'd say lower bottom middle. Yeah, but it's not in the bottom tier. It's not. Well, it's it's not their garbage films. Yeah. So, uh, you know, hold your head high, BVS. You you, you did you all right. You and your bell curve. You always, you're always <laughs> glass half you gotta, you gotta contextualize stuff. Yeah. 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 Coming in at number 21, 
um, I guess maybe the most successful movie on this list is Avatar. James Cameron's Avatar, of course, came out in 2009, created a whole society of people that are obsessed with this fucking franchise, even though it didn't come out with a sequel until 13 years later. Made for $237 million then, but admittedly created new technology while making yes. the movie, so that makes sense. Uh, that's the equivalent of 337 now. Made $785 million domestically, almost $3 billion worldwide now. It has had a couple re-releases. Um, this took James Cameron years and years to make, both with crafting the script, getting people to buy in, creating the technology to even yeah. make the movie makeable. This was, I don't know, a 20 year process for him or something like that. Yeah. A lot of James Cameron movies. And then like we talked about a couple of weeks ago with the Phantom Menace, George Lucas did some things on that movie that cost a lot at the time, but then it saved movie makers uh, moving forward. For sure. It, when you, when you invent movie making technology for better or worse, whatever you, whatever you made was worth it, at least in, in my mind. At number 20 is Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest, made in 2006 for $225 million. With inflation, $340 million. It made 423 domestic, over $1 billion worldwide. You have casts, you have sets, you have costumes, you have locations. When you film at sea, it costs a lot of money, and you got a lot of special effects. Uh, I'm a Caribbean guy. I just discovered you're a Caribbean guy. I, I prefer Caribbean. Are you caramel or caramel? Caramel. I think Shaq also was. I can't think of that commercial right now. <laughs> uh, the Pirate franchise. Another franchise. Couldn't be more out on. Don't understand the appeal. Never will. We'll never see. You know what? I might see the Marge Bob one. I will never see uh, another Pirates movie made. If it weren't for the Pirates of the Caribbean, Marvel would have never been bought by Disney. Also, it, probably, yeah, you're right, number one, about that. Um Oddly, like this weird thing where they created a movie franchise based off a ride in their theme park, and it was so massively successful. It's fucking insane that that happened. And then it, I don't know. So as a kid, I remember going to Disneyland, still haven't been to Disney World. But uh, when I went back, uh, the Pirates movies had been made in between at least two of them, and they went in and added a Johnny Depp character in the ride after the fact. So that's As that's, they should. That's a nice little as fun fact right there. Uh, number 19, the best Woo! movie on this list, the one I am most excited to talk about is Waterworld. 1995's Waterworld, made for $172 million then. That is the equivalent of $344 million now. Insane. It made under $100 million domestically, 88 Eric Lindros. It made 264 total worldwide, a colossal failure in terms of It eventually money. did make its money back uh going to cable so keep that in mind i have watched this movie i don't know 130 times on cable tv between what 1997 and 2015 i have seen this movie so many times and i didn't realize people didn't like this movie until i got to college my freshman year 2007 i don't remember how the fuck it came up or who was talking about it but Waterworld came up and i was talking about how much i liked Waterworld. More, I guess, the concept of Waterworld than anything, but I digress. Still, Waterworld. What's and insane though? Is one of my friends famously... was like, "You realize that's like one of the worst movies ever," and I was like, "Fuck no, no chance." And 07 was also right around the time where uh, I think Rotten Tomatoes had been made, but it was slowly becoming more and more relevant yeah, yeah. in in the movie industry. What's crazy though is that you famously dislike the Mad Max movies. Yeah, this is Mad Max on water, infinitely better. Infinitely no. more intriguing. <laughs> no. Boats and no. water, way greater than motorcycles and cars. All right, let's get into some of these costs. Like, it has they a floating built... city. I'm getting Where's into that. Where's that in Mad they, Max? They built a 1,000-ton floating island off the coast of Hawaii that was a quarter mile wide and used all of the steel from the island. If this was such a failure, why is the Waterworld attraction at Disney World, wherever the fuck that is, why is that such a big hit? Is it Universal? Yeah, Universal, wherever the fuck it is. More production problems. They filmed at Open Sea even after Steven Spielberg warned them not to. Said, don't do this. <laughs> when you're at sea, you deal with storms. Mm. You deal with uh, other ocean. things that you have no control over. Yeah, like orcas. Like orcas that were out to kill everybody. <laughs> Speaking of killing everybody, a stunt coordinator almost died. 
Yeah, not only is the sea rough, when you're in the fucking South Pacific, that is also, like, the roughest part of the ocean, so that's a, that's not the greatest of decisions. Several people nearly drown. Yep, that also makes sense. Kevin Costner was going through a divorce and apparently, at the time, was a real bitch. Wow. Oh, the role called for it. He was just method acting. $65 million was the original budget. It then jumped to $100 million for realism. And then uh, their shooting schedule that started at 96 days ballooned to 157 days, which brought the budget to 175. I challenge those that have not seen this movie to go watch this movie and tell me it's bad. I dare you. Well, we've already agreed that if Deadpool is bad, we're going to talk about Waterworld for all of August. I... Well, any of our listeners out there that have not seen Waterworld, which I, I sh- I'm sure is few and far between since it was on cable TV for 20 straight years, uh, I dare to go watch this and tell me it's bad. Go right ahead, guys. <laughs> At number 18 is John Carter from 2012, made for $264 million with inflation. It's 350 it made $73 million domestic, 284 worldwide. Director Andrew Stanton, this was his first live action movie. They gave him a big budget movie to do. He had only done Pixar at the time, and he just tried to shoot a bunch of set pieces, giant set pieces. Some of them they didn't even use. Yeah, also playing into this was, uh, I believe this was Taylor Kitsch's first massive uh, mm-hmm. movie role or starring role in a movie and he was his co-star was uh her name escapes me she also played tyra on friday night lights these two are from friday night lights were love interests on friday night lights were love interests in this movie um this movie's not good this is is a movie that i felt like maybe could have been good with a with a better story i i don't even like kitchen and the girl i forget her name once again aren't really all that bad in this the movie around them is just pretty bad and um, I think that Disney was looking at it as like, this can be another Pirates of the Caribbean. For and sure. It just did not take yeah, off. Fell, fell flat on its face. Coming at number 17, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Uh, is this is that the is that part one? Or I don't know. I never forget the, the titles of the last two or three of those books. Uh, 2009, made for 250 then, equivalent to 355 now. Made 302 domestically, 935 worldwide. This is, again, we talked about this a little bit at the top. Some of these movies, when you're getting to the end of the franchise and you're tying up the story, you just got to pay what it, what it takes. It's a, There's no cutting corners when you're in the fucking seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth movie uh, of, of a franchise. That just is what it is. This next one is really interesting to me because when I saw it, I'm like, really? This is what is at number 16 with inflation of all time? And that is 2010's Tangled, Disney's Tangled, which was made for $260 million with inflation. That is 363. It only made 201 domestic and almost 600 worldwide, which actually that's not that bad. It made its money back. It made enough for them to then go and make Frozen, Moan, and everything else. And speaking of those other movies, this movie changed its animation style midway through and reinvented a 3D animation technology that Disney then reused for those other movies. I actually specifically remember about this movie around when it came out or before it came out, um, them talking about the animation and the new style and them showing and zooming in on the hairs and how the hairs move freely. It was made specifically for the hairs to make the hairs. And then like to your, to your point has now been used in all of their movies going forward. So actually tangled is obviously not a cult classic because it's a Disney movie. Um, Tangled probably doesn't get enough love, but there's there is a, a hardcore Tangled audience, and like you said, it, it it enabled them to use this new technology going forward. Coming at number fifteen, the thirteen years in the making, Avatar: The Way of Water, twenty twenty two, made for three hundred and fifty million in twenty twenty two, and get this, Q, that yeah. price has gone up three sixty four in today's money. Hell yeah, it, uh, it made its money back and then some, six eighty four domestically. 2.32 billion worldwide. Um, again, everything we said about the first Avatar applies to this one. Uh, not only did they create new technology for that first one, James Cameron's whole thing, and I get this doesn't sit, mean that they're worth watching, but I get why he waited. He needed CGI technology to get better for him to gr- 
greatly expand the world and universe he's telling these stories in. So actually a little bit like Tangled, um, the CGI and creative process here for digital uh, graphics have improved so much that he was now able to make this movie in 2022 as opposed to 2012 when you would have thought a sequel would have come. It's also a lot longer. Is it much longer than the first one? I don't even know. It felt a lot longer. Is sure. it longer? I don't know. Also, shooting in 3D costs money. Four at uh, 14, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness cost $351 million in 2022. With inflation 365, it made 411 domestic, almost $1 billion worldwide. And according to Screen Rant, this sequel created 22 new universes and filled them with visual feasts, visual feasts of new locations and had different appearances for each one so that they would not be alike. I don't remember these 22 worlds. That was going to be my first point. I remember, first of all, one of the great disappointments of the Mac and Goo program was this movie and one coming up in two movies. This movie is not bad. However, yeah. this movie promised a lot and delivered on almost none of it. We thought we were getting 22 new universes. We got three, two, played in two, really? Were we shown more than what we got? Like maybe while they well, were going the one through, where they like, fell they were through like yeah. seven of them, but that doesn't really fucking count. Yeah. And also like if they spent all their money on that, that is just stupid, dumb, mm -hmm. dumb is that, that more like dumb or strange. Am I right? Dr. Summer. Okay. Yeah. That's not bad. That one. Yeah. Uh, coming in at number 12, uh, tied at 12, 2017's uh, Justice League. So this is not the Snyder effect, right? This, is this separate or is this included? I'm not sure if this adds the Snyder one at the end of it, though. Okay. So maybe it is included. I don't know. Made for $300 million then, equivalent to 373 now. So maybe this does include the Snyder money. I'm not really sure. Made 229 domestically, 661 worldwide, probably broke even, all things considered. We don't have to go into this too much. There's been a million articles and interviews about the nightmare it was to work on that set and what Josh Whedon apparently did or didn't do. And then, of course, we got the Snyder Cut in 2020 or 2021, which, again, I would argue is actually worse than the Justice League. Either way, the amount of money and effort that went into those two movies did not produce what they should have in terms of what DC was looking for. Just colossal, colossal failure there. Yeah, and the movie started out with a giant budget. I think that Whedon only got about $25 million for his reshoots. Um, and then the Snyder Cut later on got anywhere from forty to $70 million. Mac, also at number 12 is Star Wars, The Last Jedi, made in 2017 for $300 million. With inflation, 373 It made 620 domestic and $1.3 billion worldwide. You are paying a pretty big cast. The effects look amazing. Say what you want about the story, but this movie might be one of their better-looking movies. But uh, when dealing with the new sequel trilogy it's all rush production so they're really paying to get these done you know what we should have made this point at the top we kind of alluded to it a little bit but when we talked about solo at number 23 a lot of the reason why that movie did not get many theater goers was because of this movie right here the year Possibly. prior you had the force awakens in 2015 i believe that was a smash success however way you want to cut it Sure, they ha it had its detractors saying it was too much like the original, yada, yada. Whatever, fan service -y. They gave us something we really, really enjoyed. Still really like that movie. This movie comes out, and due to the lack of oversight um, for the people running Star Wars, blame whoever you want. I'll blame Filoni and Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, Ryan Johnson was allowed to make whatever movie he wanted to make. He did that. Uh, I would say a great majority of fans really hate this movie. It does have its small, strong minority that say it's one of the better Star Wars movies. Um, but this movie not only lampooned the final movie, uh, uh, Rise of Skywalker, it also lampooned a lot of what they were going to do going forward. Ultimately, we still ended up with the Mandalorian or not. But you remember right around the time they announced Solo, they started announcing these side Star Wars projects where they're going to start filling in the gaps. We got Rogue One and, and, and what have you. And this movie 
because it was so divisive, literally killed a lot of those projects. Now, we are getting a lot more now because they've had success in some of these side side uh, ventures. But man, this movie, I will always remember this movie because in my adult life, especially uh, once we started the podcast, you know, I, a lot of times I just won't go see a movie I'm not amped up for. And therefore, I very rarely leave the theater not liking what I just saw or hating what I just saw. This is one strange. It happened a little bit. This is the only movie I was like over the moon about, like had been looking forward to for two years and left the theater upset, like mad, like couldn't even believe what we had just gotten. And I don't know. I'm like jaded now. I'm scarred because I don't know. We can tell if I'll ever be able to have like, I'll, I don't know. Now I'm just cautious about all of these like sequel movies and universes. We love this movie just hurt me. It hurt me so much. Well, what else was a sequel, Mac? <laughs> Kicking off our top 10, naturally, a tie at number 10. Uh, 2007 Spider-Man 3. This was made for $258 million. Today's money is $379 million. That's Yikes. three made three thirty seven domestically, eight ninety six dollars worldwide. This made a shit ton of money because the first two movies were really fucking good. The second one was great. And yes. this movie teased Venom. Unfortunately, this movie sucked. This movie... Not great. Like... X3 is a bad movie. This movie sucked out loud. This movie made me way more upset than X3 did. Like X3, you know what, is is a bad movie, but it didn't make me angry the way this movie did. Yeah, this movie, of course, the third in a trilogy, so the actors cost more money once again, and they had to pay more on the effects. Now let's go on to the other number 10, which is Fast X, which is the 10th of the Fast franchise made in 2023. For $379 million with inflation, $379 million, 146 domestic, 705 worldwide at the box office. We have the rising salaries of the entire cast, the characters that have not only been around the entire time, but now you have the ones that have been around for two or three movies, four or five movies. You're also driving and crashing a lot of cars once again. To your point, though, uh, that worldwide money's coming way down with all these fast movies we've we've talked about on the list. So maybe it is coming to a close. Coming in at number nine, Titanic, 1997's Titanic, made for 200 million then. That is the equivalent of 380 now. Made obviously all of the money, 674 domestic, 2.2 billion worldwide. This was the first movie to cost over 200 million. I was wrong earlier. This was the one. There you yeah. go. Which makes sense in, in the grand scheme of things. This is also the first movie I remember having two cassettes in the when you bought the vhs which like forrest gump made it cool i didn't remember forrest gump but you're you're, you're probably right but titanic's the first one i remember this is also the first pair of tits i remember seeing so oh, yeah. pivotal pivotal moment here for for max raxku a bulk of this film's budget was spent on recreating the titanic through practical and digital effects the faux titanic was built for the film and likely cost more than the actual ship did to make it actually i believe cost roughly half of the budget to do the Titanic. And then I also read about 40 million uh, on a horizon tank, which is, so it's ocean, but just off the ocean. So you are not shooting in the ocean, but it looks like you are in the ocean. Gotcha. So it's like a controlled condition in the ocean. Yes. Yeah. Also, this movie is directly responsible for the rising commercial tours that the Titanic saw afterwards. Mm -hmm. So directly led to the death of those people and the fucking submarine that exploded or imploded a couple of years ago, which is fucking, I don't, I don't know. I would rather go into space to the moon, to Mars, than go to the bottom of the ocean. Like not even a question oh, I, of my mind. I saw a great meme tweeted out by the devil the other day. By the devil? Said, by the devil. That's the name of the guy. Okay. Satan, I believe. Yep. That's what he goes yep. by. Sure. Diesel sure. bub. Uh, but it was, a, it was a meme of the old lady from the Titanic saying, I had sex with a homeless guy and then let him drown. <laughs> Fucking smashed him. It's good stuff. I like that. <laughs> That's right up my alley. <laughs> You're up. I just did Titanic. Oh, you did Titanic. It's yeah. my bad. <laughs> At number eight, Avengers Infinity War made in 2018 for $325 million with inflation. That's almost $400 million. 
It made 669 domestic and over 2 billion worldwide. Let's just couple that up with number seven, yes, which sir. is Avengers Endgame, made in 2019, or it was released in 2019. These movies were actually shot together. It took one year to shoot them both. This was made for $356 million with inflation, $424 million. It made $858 domestic, $2.8 billion worldwide. And when it comes to the costs of these movies, you are paying the main cast, the cast that has been around for a while, $15 million each. And then you get to RDJ in Avengers Endgame, who was making $75 million at that time. Worth every penny. And yep. together, and you really could talk about these as, as one movie, um, a little over $800 million in today's money to make uh, these two movies grossed almost 500 billion dollars we should have said this at the beginning so worth this is economics 101 <laughs> you gotta spend money to make money my uh second and third favorite movies on the list behind Waterworld, of course uh coming into our goose juicy six pack here yes. another fucking stupid pirates movie pirates of the caribbean at world's end from 2007 the year goo and i graduated high school made for 300 million dollars then that's 441 now Made 309 domestically, 962 worldwide. This was the world's first $300 million movie. Do you think that the sequel to these movies, the next uh, Buckheimer, Bruckheimer? Yeah. Bruckheimer, sorry. Yeah. The next Bruckheimer one, is this going to be called Another Stupid Pirates Movie? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I don't get the appeal, especially considering the cost, but it does make a lot of money. I don't know. No. Special effects locations you're shooting at sea, and I'm I'm not sure if it's this one or the next one when Depp starts getting paid like fifty million a month. I don't think it was this one. I think it was after the first two or three. He was like, "All right, this is a pain in the ass to make." You I, want me to come back? Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. Yeah. I want my because I think money. this was the second one, right? Two thousand seven was the third one. Oh, I thought it was the second. I believe. One. I'm pretty sure it's the second one. I don't, I don't know how years work, really so matter. I'm going to say third one. Yeah, it whatever. really does not matter. At number five is another Avengers movie made for $365 million at the time. I believe they did get a big tax break on this. I think they shot it in Georgia. Mm. Georgia. 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 With inflation, $469 million. 2015's Avengers Age of Ultron made 460 domestic, $1.4 billion worldwide. Locations. This is shot in many locations and also shot all around the world. And the effects were done by 10 different studios. Ding podcast idea. Top 10 Georgia songs. Uh, John Mayer's Why Georgia would be very high on my list. Maybe. So Georgia has to be in the title? Maybe, maybe never. No. Thematically has to be about Georgia. So can we do Peaches by the Presidents of the United States? Sure. Sure. Why not? Okay. Um, Age of Ultron is a movie that a lot of people... We're disappointed by talk about as a disappointment. I was not then. I still hold this movie in higher regard than other MCU fans. I was not disappointed by this movie. Um, sure, it it could have been better, but like we didn't have this weighing up against anything other than the first Avengers movie, and I didn't think it was that much of a drop off from the first movie. So maybe I'm a fucking moron. That that might be true, but I like this movie. Good. I think it's too much of uh hey, look at this. Hey, guys, check this out. <laughs> I'm a fan. I like to be serviced. Coming in at number four. Um, surprised uh, Force Awakens isn't on this. Oh, it is. All right. No, spoiled. what are you talking about? Don't spoil it. <laughs> I'm surprised number one isn't on this list. <laughs> I had scrolled. Gil. I'm surprised Wayne Gretzky isn't on the list of best <laughs> hockey players of all time. <laughs> See, I just like I like being surprised when I come out of the podcast. I just ruined it for everyone. Mac just showed off that he has not read through this list. Coming in at number four, starting our Mount Rushmore, Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker from 2019, cost 416. Then that's 496 now. A lot made 515 domestically, over a billion worldwide, almost 1.1. 1 .1. Um, obviously, this was going to be an expensive movie, anyways. Um, the fact that they had to they were trying to do movie. damage control yeah. based off the last They had movie. to mold their movie in a way that would mitigate The Last Jedi, but then also try to propel like stuff going forward, considering they were still trying to do other projects. So this movie was dead in the water, which is why I loved it after I saw it, because all it did was take a shit on Ryan Johnson's chest. And for that, I will always love this movie. 
I thought it was swashbuckling, and I like that. <laughs> More swashbuckling than the Pirates movies, no doubt. All right. So uh, with that, by the way, long runtime, <laughs> special effects, and once again, an accelerated production. That's a big issue with the Star Wars sure. uh, sequels. Actually, did you know that the Star Wars prequels, the three movies combined, were made for less than any of the... Uh, I think the was The Last Jedi. That was the cheapest one. So it was actually made for less combined in that one movie. I believe it. I definitely believe that. I think because it was, they were fucking around with digital stuff and CGI and whatnot, but it was all like in-house. They didn't have to outsource any of it. Number three is another stupid pirates movie. The Caribbean <laughs> on Stranger Tides from 2011 cost $379 million to make. There is a tax break there. Get off my back. Uh, with today's money, it's five thirteen. That's over a half billion dollars. But it did make two forty one domestic and over one billion worldwide. Johnny Depp cost fifty five million dollars in this movie. The set was at sea, and they shot this entire movie in three D, which cost a lot of money. Seems like, if you ask me, a lot yeah. of the movies on this list were trying to copy Waterworld, but none of them could replicate the success. Of it seemed like Waterworld. out of the 37 movies here, 40 of them are Waterworld. <laughs> Coming in at number two. This one was the one that blew my mind, by the way. Um, yeah, this is an interesting one, considering none of its other brethren are on the list. And half the movie is shot at a fucking house. <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, obviously 2018. This was the sequel to Jurassic World. Uh, this was made for 432 then. That is 524 now. It it's did insane. make an awful lot of money because Jurassic World money. was so good. Uh, 418 domestically, 1.3 billion worldwide. They tried to up their game here uh, and change the genre and what they were doing. They took it off island. They introduced a lot more humans, a lot, a lot more, or a lot more unique dinosaurs. But you have a good point. And maybe this is why it costs, maybe it costs a lot for the CG is painting those dinosaurs in more real life than against like green trees and backgrounds. But half of this movie takes place in a mansion and I don't know why it costs so much to make. Half of this movie takes place in a mansion. Half of this movie, you have a dinosaur that's the Indoraptor that is pretty much just playing Bugs Bunny. Um, it's, you know, creeping around the house and like tiptoeing and like pulling on uh, bed sheets and whatnot. But I will say this is that this movie does look really, really good. And the dinosaurs in this movie do look amazing. And that final scene on Isla Nublar of the volcano going off and killing slash pushing all the dinosaurs off the island, I'm sure that cost an extreme amount of money. And that might be where most of it went. Uh, there was something there with this movie. Like the idea of people being hunted like a like Michael Myers in a house, but it's a dinosaur is No, cool. it's stupid. It no, just, get off. No, it stop. just didn't work. It it's didn't stupid. work. Goo, coming in at number one. No. Is this my turn? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, you're right. Want to do it together? Yeah, okay. Coming right. in at number one, Star Wars, The Force, Force Awakens. Awakens. Made in 2015 for $447 million. That's the equivalent to 575 Today, it made three, I'm sorry, 937 domestic. That's almost $1 billion domestic. It made $2 billion worldwide. The reason for the price is accelerated production, I believe. I'm not sure when Disney bought Star Wars, but as soon as they did, they said, we need a Star Wars movie. Yeah. Here we go. Special effects cost a lot of money. Harrison Ford cost a lot of money. Long runtime. This movie kicked off what should have been a really strong trilogy. Obviously, that that didn't happen. Um, this is making me think, Goo. We're on the verge of the world's first $500 million movie, and it's probably going to be a Star Wars or a Marvel movie in the next couple or of years. Or another Waterworld? Oh, I, see, that's a movie you just shouldn't touch. You couldn't make, so you when can't you say make a D, WW2. You mean S E A? You can't make a WW2. It's not going to work. No, no. You just you remake the first one. Or do you think Waterworld is a Mad Max prequel? Would you put Waterworld in the Mad Max uh, world? I just asked that. I don't know if you'd call it a prequel, though. Oh, do what you, comes first? Do you think it's in the, water? Do you think it's in the future of uh, of Mad Max? Yeah, I like was everyone. Past. 
everyone wanted water so badly, and then suddenly it's all water. I was thinking the like, water evaporated. Be careful what you wish for. I thought water evaporated, or there's a big leak, you know, all leaking to the center of the earth, and then you get Mad Max. I do often question while watching Mad Max, is this what Australia's like? I think so. I'm pretty sure if you look at the map of Australia, first of all, there's like no cities on the North Coast because it's like the most dangerous place on the planet. There's so many crazy shit. And I guess the the sea, the sea there is insane. Uh, like 80% of the Australian population is on the Eastern and Southern Coast. And then you have like three, two or three cities like way out West. But that middle desert area, where presumably Mad Max lives is like completely uninhabited. There's some, there's some Aborigines, I believe like living there here and there, but it's like pretty much uninhabitable. I think we nailed this list, even though we just kind of copied and pasted from Wikipedia. Yeah. Credit to us. Yeah. We went through, we looked for little things and we did it. So brave new world, by the way, is going to fall at the very least, uh, 17th, or 18th on this list. And by the time we get to that movie, I wouldn't be surprised if it's closer to like 10, nine, eight, seven, because it's at 350 now. And that there's definitely going to be more costs coming. I think it's going to get close to 375, if not 400 million by the time that movie comes out. So head over to social media and tell us which movie you were surprised by the price of. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get into Max. Man, Max, that could be anything. It could be a boat. And this week, Mac, I had COVID, so mm. I had the house to myself for five straight days while my family went on vacation. <laughs> so not only not, not only did have you gotten, have COVID, you got a double punishment. I have gotten COVID twice now. And both times, I was supposed to go to Italy the first time. We had to cancel that trip. The second time, my family just went on vacation without me. I didn't want to bring that up when you told me you were going to have to miss your trip, but I was thinking yep. in my head the last time he got COVID was literally like two days before they were going to leave for Italy. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's what happened. So this time I had a house to myself and I just watched whatever I could find there. I saw Furiosa. I thought it was good. Uh, I'll get to it at some point, I guess. I, is it better than Fury Road? No. Oh, boy i didn't like fury road okay well i uh maybe you'll you'll like the character of furiosa i, I, more. I, don't, I don't know so fury road again i didn't see it in theaters so i guess tell me to go fuck myself when i, I watched that. that movie the whole runtime i was like did i watch the same movie as everyone else like how did everyone love this movie how did this movie win fucking eight oscars or whatever the fuck you know what was? you might like about this one though is that you are a huge hemsworth fan and he is quite good in this okay all right he's a real good bad guy is there this. more dialogue in this than fury road or is it similar a little bit okay a little more setup there's, but a, it's there's more of a similar. story than people just racing across the desert i mean they're still racing across the yeah. desert she doesn't say it's much um, he does ham it up a bit, which I think you'll enjoy. Okay. All right. Well. I also saw Godzilla, uh, times Kong. This is what we got. And I hated it. Oh. I could not. I, at so I many points it. of this movie, I, didn't I like fucking it. hated it. I, didn't I hate hated it. it at points in this movie. I'm just like, I know I complain about the people in these movies mm -hmm. and I want to see more of the monsters in this movie. I don't care about either. I don't care about the monsters nor the people. And while Kong looks really good, Godzilla looks really good, the bad monkey in this looked like shit. I kind of liked the bad monkey, to be honest with you. I didn't um, like it. And the baby monkey, too. The baby monkey looked like Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle. This, I'll, I'll tell you what, though. This movie definitely suffered from me, obviously, uh, seeing um, uh, King yes. of the Planet of the Apes first. Before it, yep. Because that Going movie looks so much better than this movie does. But you also feel more for the apes in that movie. Yeah. And you enjoyed how they communicated no and doubt. how they how they conveyed their emotions. And this one, I, there's there's a lot of apes. Some of the apes are slaves. Uh, they have control over this dinosaur. I don't I don't like it. I didn't like it. Yeah. I again, I didn't think it was good, but I definitely didn't hate it as much as you. It's I I, I can't. I said if you liked the prior one, you'll probably like this one. If not, don't watch it. I got this gauntlet. I'm feeling good. That's the way Godzilla, I mean, uh, Kong talks in his head. I also, I hated that. And I don't want to spoil anything, but when they're like, oh, no, no. For months. 
They're like his arm. Luckily, we had something in the wings. W- Luckily, ready to we've go. been developing <laughs> Hulkbuster armor for. Yeah, King Kong. <laughs> I I hated that. I hated that. Uh, credit to Dan Stevens. I thought he was okay for the most part. Yeah, but. he actually was a good character. I agree. Um, I also watched the full six episode season of Tires on Netflix. That is the Shane Gillis show. Um, I would describe it as a worse workaholics. I thought it was tremendously disappointing. I know well, that, I was disappointed by it, but yeah. I would compare it to like a mid 2000s Comedy Central show where the dialogue doesn't feel real. The hashtag dork podcast, both boys liked it quite a bit, and mm-hmm. I was confused as to why. Um, this felt like uh, it wasn't written enough. There was too much improv. Like they went into the scene with zero written lines and they just let them figure it out from there. It just didn't work because to me, Shane is like, his personality is too big for the other characters. I thought the straight guy, the the main, the GM of the store sucked. And the I Dork did not Boys, like him at all. Dork yeah. Boys really liked him. So um, that's, maybe that's the difference. Hashtag what's it's a, the difference between uh, us and, and Dork. I just, it wasn't bad. The show wasn't bad, but Shane Gillis's last special was fucking hysterical. Mm-hmm. So I had pretty high hopes for this. And it just, it didn't meet those marks. I watched two YouTube video essays done by the account <laughs> Folding Ideas. Both of these were 90 minutes long. One of them that just the came fuck? out 10-ish days ago. Do you have an called... odd, you're like an eight-year-old kid just watching YouTube videos all day. Yeah, this was 90 minutes long and it was called <laughs> I Don't Know James Rolf. Who the fuck is James Rolf? The Angry Video Game Nerd. Okay. All right. I watched it. I was waiting for something explosive. And by the end, he was just telling everyone, it's a you issue. The reason why you don't like these videos anymore is because you've gotten older. That's it. He's not wrong. Kind of a spoiler. Yeah. 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 I mean, I I watched him, I think, back in like 06, 07 for many years. That's what everyone says about Star Wars is we're too old. So that like, that's why we criticize Star Wars. Oh, by the way, by the way, I don't know if we talked about it on air. Um. The Acolyte's getting a lot of shit. Episode five of The Acolyte was fucking amazing. Yeah, we it talked was, about this. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, got, this last I, got, I got your COVID brain. That's all right. Uh, speaking of that account, Folding Ideas, I watched a video he made three years ago <laughs> talking about the Nostalgia Critics review of The Wall, which I remember watching at the time being like, I'm not watching any more of his videos. Of The Wall? From uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall. Oh, all right. You actually might like this one because it is just shitting on this this guy for 90 straight minutes of being like, how are you this stupid? Okay. All right. I don't, you know what? I do go down YouTube rabbit holes, so maybe I will. I go down a lot of YouTube rabbit holes. Yeah. yeah. A lot of them. And then I also watched um many videos of Jiminy Glick. He's back. Boy. So your family had a great time in, in Virginia or wherever they went and you watched Jiminy Glick. I remember growing up. <laughs> And whenever Glick was on Comedy Central, I'm like, I don't care for this Glick character. You didn't get it then. Now that I'm older and I've matured, Jiminy Glick is just right up my fucking It's like Seinfeld. As as you get older, you like it more. Jiminy Glick is equal to Seinfeld. (laughs) Like when they had Glick come back last week and host Jimmy Kimmel, fucking five straight nights of gold. The interview that he did with Bill Hader is six straight minutes of just laughter. You, well... Anytime Bill Hader is getting interviewed, it, it always yeah. devolves into laughter. I think Billy you... Mays is dead. <laughs> That's not a bad click. Um, I think you're uh, uh, a perfect example that uh, COVID really does affect people's brains. I've been in a weird headspace the past couple of days. <laughs> Fucking sure have. <laughs> yeah. I've been a... Like, I haven't, and I went into the weekend being like, okay, I'm going to cut a bunch of videos and get shit ready for, like, social media. Sure. I haven't cut any. No, you're too busy walking, watching James Rolfe and Jiminy Click. No, I would, I would like, start something on Premiere, and I'd watch it and be like, this isn't funny. This is fucking stupid. Got Glick on the brain. I got Glick on the brain. I'm like, this doesn't compare to Glick. Must be Glick on the brain. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I love I love Jiminy Glick. Yeah, I don't. All right. Well, that'll do it for this episode of Mac and Goo. Mac, where can the people find us? You can find us on Twitter and on Instagram. At... Oh, you don't like Glick? Well, that, no, that was like, 
I don't, that was not a glitch. What I liked, no, so Glick, ju he jumps into that voice sometimes. What I liked is that at first they just did pre taped Glick, and then by the end of the week they're like, let's just have Glick talk with the celebrities. At Mac and Goo Podcast on Twitter and Instagram, every other platform, Mac ampersand Goo, Mac Shift at Seven, Shift it Seven. It says here goo. that you're a huge fan of Woody Allen, but not his work. That includes Facebook, Stitcher, T Castbox, Spreaker, Google Play, iHeartRadio. We are on Spotify, but more importantly, Apple Podcasts. Get on there, give us a five star review, rate, subscribe. And I got Glick on the brain. Uh, if you do that, we'll get you a free Mac and Good t shirt from the folks over at Watertown Sportswear. That's Watertown Sportswear on 34 Mod Auburn Street in Watertown. Watertown X, Watertown Sportswear Experts, Screen Printing and Embroidery. Tpublic.com. Check us out. Uh, we are back on our dumps at the beginning of the week schedule, which is great. I love that. Yeah, it's it's more natural, I feel like. Yeah. So, Tuesdays are Goose Days. I abuse kangaroos. Tim Burton. Bye. Please flip the cassette over to side B to continue the adventure. Now it's time for girls jumping on trampolines.